All right, here we go, guys, and I am pointing right at the sign, uh, the logo of the boat, a Bertram 31. This is a 1973 model, uh, one of the most iconic boats of all time, a C. Raymond Hunt design, and for those of you that don't know who C. Raymond Hunt is, he is literally in the, in the top echelon of boat architects of all time. This was a revolutionary boat when it came out in the early 60s. We're looking at a flybridge model. There's my friend George. It's his boat. We're going we're gonna to do a quick tour of it. And uh, this hull, or a hull very similar to this, won a race. One of only two boats that actually competed at, I think, 1960, a uh, Miami or Florida to Bahamas race. And again, revolutionary. 24 degrees of dead rise, 31 feet long. 11-2 beam, it's actually just under 31 feet. Don't uh, grill me in the comments. I think it's 37, 30 feet, seven inches. But uh, enormous fishing cockpit. And this one is beautifully, beautifully restored. Mostly restored. We'll look at the inside, that's not restored. And there's George. We're gonna step up to the flybridge and learn more about the boat up there. And we'll do a full tour and walk around. And then we'll give some info on George's business. He does sunset and uh, wine and cheese tours here in the beautiful North Fork of Long Island with this boat. And I mean, it, it is just stunningly gorgeous. I'm not sure how it's gonna show in the video. I hope it does, but uh, just an amazing boat. Really one of the, if you think fishing boats of all time, if the 31 Bertram is not at or near the top of the list, I'm sorry, you're crazy. This is, this is as good as it gets in terms of uh, classic fishing boats and fishing boats in general. So we're gonna jump up to the flybridge and uh, chat with George. I'm up here in the flybridge looking forward and man, you it, it feels like you're in a semi-truck. You can see everything from up here. And here we are with George. George, how did, how did you find this boat? So I'm gonna tell you, this was a bug of mine from a little kid. Obviously, you know, back when I was 13, you know, my family couldn't afford a new one at the time. I think they were going for 65,000. I said, you know, one day I'm going to find one and I'm going to buy one. And, um, you know, I traveled all across the eastern seaboard. I've looked at about 15 of them before I finally found this one. And she was just beautiful. And then we started restoring what we can. Yeah. And I, I'm looking at the helm here. And man, uh, this looks like a brand new boat. Uh, it look, you got three screens here, three garments. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what? Uh, and, and I'm curious what the raised lower. I presume that's the windlass, but yes. So we have a, a brand new autopilot, windlass, high water alarm, Bluetooth with radios, all new speakers. Uh, we had two VHF systems put in. Uh, below we have 110 outlets. We have USB charging all over the place. Uh, and then we have a completely new lighting dash here. Um, all the wiring was redone, all the LED lighting, side lights, front lights, light bar. Um, this boat has everything, underwater lighting, uh, all the groundings were done, the through holes were done. Uh, we just went through every single light fixture, every single ground to make sure it was tight. We went with Italian ball valves on everything. Uh, we didn't cut corners. Yeah, and what, what is she powered with? She's powered with the Yanmar 6 LPs. Okay, those uh, are the 315s? Yes, good good running boat. She cruises about 25 knots, you know, and I think that's all you really need. And you that's, know. you know, that's not slow. I mean, 25 it's knots not. equals about 28, 28 and a half miles an hour, I think, if I'm doing the math correctly Sip in my brain. Fuel. Yeah, yeah, no, Sip. I know. At that speed, I'm presuming maybe seven gallons a side? Yeah, yeah okay. about that, yep. Okay, and the eyes and glass looks like it's in really good shape. All this was new. This was all done. We actually created a complete full enclosure because we all like to, you know, blackfish when black fishing season comes. Yeah. So I had I had a 110 outlet put in right here with a waterproof box. You could put your little heater in, run your winter time. You want to run down to North Carolina, whatever you want to do from New York, you got heat. And um, how does how does she ride? Having never ridden on one. Is it as legendary as people say? It, it is. I mean, three, four footers come at you from a wake of one of these other, you know, sport fishes, and you just, you know, most of the time I don't even tab her, but you could if you wanted to just be that yeah. little safer, and she just slices right through. John, you have to remember, most of this boat is underwater. Yeah. So that's what you're dealing with. Two thirds of her hull is under. When she cuts through that, you don't see it. It's almost like a down east boat, it exactly. sounds like. Exactly. Very and cool. That's, that's the difference. Very cool. All right, so so we have a big cockpit to go through in the cabin. Why don't why don't we uh, step down and go through that portion of the boat next? Sure. 
All right, we were just about to go down and we realized we didn't go over these beautiful seats, including that aft seat here. George, uh, apologies, we, we glossed okay. over that. Tell me what we have here. So this, this design here uh, was preferred by a gentleman in South Jersey called Holtz Boatworks. And he originally designed this part of the 31, which then took off. And a lot of times you see these boats on the internet and they all have this type of design, which is great for seating because this top is a little small, but once you incorporate a three, four seater up here, it changes the game. Yeah. So that's the beauty. And did you, did you buy the boat with this or did you add it? Yes, I, I purchased the boat with this. Okay. I just made some covers for it. Yeah, and I see right behind it, uh, six, six rod holders. I'm big on rod holders. I try to point that out in any boat review I do, but for the fisherman in you, there you go, six rod holders. All right. Oh, for, definitely. Oh, you and the, yeah, you have, have the, the tuna teasers. Yeah, yeah, I see that too. We have a center rigger base up there. We just haven't put it on for right now. So, yeah, she's what, for green she sticking? fish. No, for us, uh, just center rigger. Oh, just a center rigger to go out. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I'm not a tuna guy. But okay, for real this time, now we're going to go down and check out the other okay. side of the boat. Let's head down there. All right, and now we're looking at the aft cockpit. Uh, George has both fish boxes open, and you really feel the, the width of this boat. Again, 11 2 beam. It, very substantial. You definitely feel it when you're back here. George, what can you tell us about uh, this area of the boat? So this this portion of the boat, these fish boxes are probably as big as you're ever going to find on these boats, which, you know, you could fit in a 10-year-old if you had to stack them up here. They're pretty big. Again, this was a custom floor deck. Uh, there was other decks from Glastron, but nothing really gave you glass tech. I'm sorry. Nothing really gave you this depth and this size of a fish box, if that's what you want. And then also we have live wells here, which you know were incorporated with, within the back of the boat. These were all custom made. Again, in the yeah. early 60s, the, the, a lot of this would have been revolutionary. Correct. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I know that we know the boat's a 73, but it's, its history dates back to the early 60s. Fish boxes were not an option. It was coolers and everything right. else. Right. So here now, and then also this here, so, yeah, I saw that. I didn't know what that was. So this is storage. Uh, I know C Cabrera used to make a lot of kits for the sides. These were all custom made. Right. On, on so the boat wouldn't sides. have come with that, but it would have been no. something that owners would have put in for more storage. This came with the trend, you know, coming into 90s and early 2000s when a lot of guys got the bug to restore these. They started incorporating fold down seats and just all sorts of crazy stuff. For what we do, this is all we need. Uh, this is more than enough for storage here on the side for yep. brushes, soaps, yep. and everything like that. And you were telling me that this used to be more fishing oriented, but because you have right. the, the the cruise charter business, the wine and cheese as we like to call it, yes. you switched this out. Correct. This was a leaning post, so you know, for trolling was great while you're out for tuna. You had your lines out, you had the clips on, you had everything going, and then you know, it's just not needed. You know, it's better for people to sit here and have their plate of food. We put the chairs out. We have a uh, custom uh, sunshade that goes out, and now it became literally yeah. a wine and cheese boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with 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 its origins with, in hardcore fishing. Exactly. And if and if anybody did want to go fishing, we do offer that. Here, yeah, I see that. We tend I see that. More rod her, holders. But she's capable. You know, she has her generators. She has her uh, ACs for overnight accommodations. So she can, that's what I used and, to use it for. And uh, I love this, the, these lounge uh, seats, and I presume the two, the two Yanmars we talked about are under there. Yes, correct. And, uh, but if you wanna, you know, just hit the sandbar, and we don't really have sandbars on the Northward, but you know what I but mean, you wanna, go, yes. you wanna go out and just uh, enjoy the- State Park or- Right, right, enjoy the, enjoy the water. There you go, two beautiful lounge seats here. And you can get away, you know, and that's the center ri riding. That's that's where the gravity of this boat is in the center. Right. So the most stable position or spot to be on the boat is right on that cover. And, you know, thinking about race cars and street legal race cars, mm -hmm. the ones that really handle well and are considered right. great performers are mid-engine, right? They, the engine is not right. all the way forward. And if you think about boats it's probably the same logical yes. thinking that if you can get the the most weight of the boat in the center of the boat the boat's naturally going to ride better factor that in with 24 degrees of dead rise and you have a superior riding boat I, I think so I mean they, they claim that the caterpillars that came with the boat originally um, were the best motors for that weight wise because they the were heavier, heavier they were you got it yeah so yeah the, the Yanmars you kind of give a little bit of that up 
but you get Toyota reliability, and a lot of people don't know this, but Yanmar's are really Toyota Correct. diesel engines. Yes. yes, and you can just put two people on top on the on the, on the the engine covers, and it's kind of maybe sort yeah, of yeah. makes up a little bit. You're adding the weight back. You just make sure they eat a big lunch, and yeah. then you can get them on top. All right. All right, how about we check out the cabin? Sounds good. All right, and we're inside now the 31 Bertram, and... You, you can see the, the classic uh, teak everywhere. I, I, it's, George, is this teak or is this another type of wood, if you it, know? It's a mix. Okay. I have to tell you, it's a little bit of oak. It's a little bit of, I almost want to say, a, a babinga type of wood. So it has its exotic feel to it. This was redone at some point, not by me. Uh, but it was done to a high level for when it was. Anything curved with wood is always money. Whenever yeah. Whenever you see something like that. Um, you know, and this door here... Uh, this was the bathroom, the forward bathroom here. Oh, George, so we're going to get killed in the comments. The yeah. forward head. The forward head. Don't call it a bathroom. I, I've, I've gotten dinged so many times for referring to it as a bathroom <laughs> in boat reviews. But I, I love these couches, too. You're right. This this would not have been standard in 1960, at least this type of material. It was? No. Uh, no, this is a... No, de definitely not. This was a day boat. The day boats had just simply... Um, <clears throat> the bathroom forward just like you see it and then two different bench seats left and right and that was one of their day boat configurations right then you had the overnight where where you're standing was a bathroom in the corner and a v-berth in the front ah, so they had a couple, okay then they had the bahia mar which you know as well but that was an express style right boat. right so this yeah they, and we didn't really talk about that but there were many versions of the 31 we're looking at the flybridge there was right. a sport fish there was yeah, the Bahiamar, I mean, you, the Express, you, you've yeah. gone over some of them. I think the Flybridge, though, over, a th I, I think I was reading on the 31 Bertram site, over 1,800 produced through the early to mid 80s, over 1,000 of them were this design. This was yeah. by far the most popular design, the Flybridge setup. Yeah, yes, it was. It was, yeah, because for sport fishermen, I mean, you want to look out. I mean, you know, these boats are in Panama, all over the world, and they're still raising fish as number one. And we were talking fishes. about that, that there's a guy in Costa Rica that's actually buying them and restoring them I himself, them there, yeah, and he too. uses them as, as yeah. his charter fishing fleet. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, same down in... Uh, yeah, same in Panama. There's a whole bunch of them down there. Yeah. Like fleet of 10 and maybe this is Panama that I'm thinking of. I forgot where the gentleman's based, but yeah. And I see there there is some storage under this under the, the couches here. And again, and not restored. Here. Yeah. And, and oh, and over here, here too. Very yeah. nice. We have all the electrical systems here. We have oh, wow. everything's been rewired. Yeah. Yeah, and it looks looks rewired. modern, man. Yep, it is. And then up here, we have a lot of the wiring. It was It was done very... You know, there was a lot more wires than what they used to give you back in the 70s. So all this panel, we have fold-down panels filled with electronics. You can come here and take a look at this dash. This was a custom dash here um, with everything you need. Uh, all the that. pumps, yeah. auto pumps, breakers, and then here... And you had another VHF in here. We had the two upstairs. Correct. And then here you have, you know, any type of, you know, if somebody wants to work with their laptop, you have all these types of Very USBs cool. and Very right below cool. you, so you could just chill on the water and just work inside from here. Have your and air it's air conditioned because I I noticed it's it's a humid day here in uh, yes, it's in cooking. Greenport, New York, or East Marion, New York. And mm -hmm. coming in here, I was like, oh, it's cool in here. And you said the you had the AC running and also LED lighting everywhere. I mean, right, that, that that's the name of the game today. LED here, you have plenty of light at night, out by the cockpit under gunner lights, underwater lights, so yeah. she's little. So, so George, if, if somebody did want to book a, a cruise, or if somebody's even just a fan of a Bertram 31 and wants to book you to go out and experience it firsthand, or a, a sunset cruise, or a wine and cheese cruise, or yeah. any type of, of, of charter, if you will, how can they reach you? So we have our emails, uh, which info which, at rarebreedmarine.com. And we're pretty good with emails. We also have a website. Which What's the is, website? Uh, rarebreedmarine.com. So people just usually go on that and inquire. Okay. And you know, a lot of people want to go to Block Island. I mean, it, it's endless where you can go here in the North Fork to Sac Harbor or just pull into a restaurant and say, look at me. Yeah. You know, sort of yeah. speak. So we get a lot of compliments on the water. A lot of guys pull up next to us and so yeah, man, I, people, I would be one of those guys if I saw you. Yeah. Actually, we were talking about this when we spoke a few days ago. There's a 28 
uh, in Sterling Harbor, where my boat is based, a, a 28 Bertram, and I make a point of always telling the guy, oh my God, beautiful boat. She's a very good running boat as well. Yeah. All right, so I'll include all that in the description. Okay. George, thank you so much. You're very welcome. Behind the scenes, thank you, Marina, George's girlfriend, for helping us uh, with the cushions and stuff. Um, and again, I'll include a link to all this in the description. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.